right, we're at 15 minutes before 6 o'clock, 11.40 KSO in the faculty lounge is the superintendent of schools, uh, Dr. Pam Holman. She has brought with her today Sue Simons, who is the assistant superintendent for uh, HR and also legal services, which means she's brought her lawyer along with her, <laughs> in essence. So um, let's talk about the most secret document in the history of mankind. Um, in the past, uh, if I wanted to uh, take a look at the contract that you have, uh, that was public information, right? You would be uh, correct, Rick. I mean, prior to this 2010 rewrite of the law, um, if someone requested the contract, it was provided. In fact, you know, I've got the articles from the Argus Leader where they've printed the details. Okay. So it, it was. Did you bring your current open. contract with you? You know, I have it here with can me. Can I look at it? Is it? Can, can I touch it? You know. I would allow you to touch it, Rick, and I would be happy to share any detail in here. I, I want to thank you for being the first one to ask me to discuss details of my contract because prior to this, when it comes through as an official uh, request mm -hmm. for open records, it comes into the business manager, the business manager looks at it in the context of the law with Sue, and it's like, this cannot be given out, and no one's bothered to sit down. And So I think you'd be the first one to say, Really, could you just tell me what details are in there? Can I hold it? You you can touch it. Yeah. I can touch it? Yeah. There it is. The heading says Superintendent's Employment Agreement, and this is, I don't know, about nine, ten pages long. It's signed uh, January 6, 2010. Uh, it's, there's your signature. Oh, my gosh. And Jeff Vicks and everybody. And then there's all these pages in between. So what happened from... A year or so ago, where this was kind of public information to now it's not. What Did the legislature do something to screw this up or make your life better? Um, the, the public records uh, law, and Sue can certainly cite that better than I can, was rewritten. And it um, very clearly indicated that um, what should be exempted from being open, which would be a personnel records, you know, except salary and directory information. Mm -hmm. And... In addition to that, where there was a rec rather recent question as to are these personnel contracts open or not, the uh, body that the legislature appoints to interpret the law um, indicated that no, these, these contracts are not public. So uh, our team made the decision, we can't consciously break the law. Really, Sue? Come on. Hold on. I'm with Pam on this one. Bye. So it, what... What's the catchphrase, or what's what 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 sentence, what comma, what semicolon, whatever it was that they did, that caused the interpretation of this to change? Well, actually, the whole law flipped. Used to be what nothing was open unless it was specifically identified, and mm. now everything's open unless it's specifically excluded. And that this, was the flip in 2010. Okay, and so it's your interpretation, and apparently the interpretation of other uh, hearing examiner type people that somehow superintendent employment contracts are now, for lack of a better term, secret. Well, I think what it says is personnel information, except salaries and directory information, is not considered a public record. Okay, so then, and I realize you can't speak for anybody else, but the other superintendents who have, not this contract obviously, but similar documents, told, uh, apparently decided it was okay for them to, quote, break the law. How do you reconcile that? Well, I think they had to make their own decisions, but our view is the legislature did it with a purpose, and the purpose is to protect all employees regardless of your status, and that if you start making exceptions for one, where do you draw the line? The legislature drew the line for us, and we think it's appropriate to honor that. Okay. Let's let's have some fun here, okay? In, in serious fun. Okay, I know you make $175,000 a year, give or take a little bit. There's some change in there somewhere, I'm sure. That's public record. That's public record. Okay. If I were to, to flip through, if I were to read, could I read through this document and not get in trouble? Um, you know, I certainly know that I personally can share any information with you, and you're looking at it in my presence, so am I leaving you a copy of that contract? No, because I'm not going to get in trouble with my legal counsel okay. here. Okay, and I'm um, not going to read this because uh, yeah. I don't have time. But I, 
I would be happy to other, answer any of your questions okay. about that contract. Are there sections in here that give you more money than what's published in your salary? The, the sections in there, again, back as reported in 2004 and 5 by the Argus Leader, that are in there today mm -hmm. are the same that they were then. And that would indicate, uh, you know, here's a, a quote right back from this highly secret document that apparently some believe never was out there, that the, uh, uh, of course, I have vacation. I yeah. have, same as the other administrators. I have sick leave, same as the other administrators. I can participate in professional development, same as the rest of our team. Mm -hmm. I have um, the uh, opportunity to take some of my money and invest in a 403 or a 457. Same mm -hmm. as any other Deferred employee. Deferred compensation exactly. kind of stuff. Okay. And then the pieces, again, that were reported initially that are still in there today, Rick, have to do with the district pays um, its share and my share of South Dakota retirement. And then I'm reading from their article, in addition, the district will put aside 10% of my salary each year for 10 years to be used in the form of an early retirement. And this replaces the benefit that I received prior to being a superintendent. You know, the teachers and the principals mm -hmm. have an early retirement. Okay. Yeah, and that's what we call, would be referred to as deferred compensation. Um, other than that, you know, as I'm thinking through it, what else might be in there that's different? Um, initially, there certainly was that I needed to live in the district within two years. At the end of that first year, we, I had dialogue with the board and said, leave it in there to live within the district, but in lieu of that, is it possible that I would just pay double taxes? Because, you know, those horses, Tim gave up his job for me to take this, and I didn't expect him to give up his horses. Mm -hmm. And I know nothing about a horse, but he loves them. Yeah. And so we ended up then, up until this contract, just paying double taxes. And until such time, his life got so busy, he decided he needed to downsize. And we actually now live out by the Renberg Elementary. So if I were to, if I were to start reading through this quietly without reading it aloud, would I find a section in here that says if the uh, school district uh, wins any kind of a sports championship that the superintendent will receive a bonus. Is there anything like that in here? You know, Rick, my contract has no bonuses and I will tell you where I stand on that philosophically and what I have shared with board members. If our district um, succeeds and grows and and has awards and achievements, I expect every employee to benefit from that. I do not believe that should be given to the superintendent. Okay, so the, if the uh, if the debate team or the um, the theater team or some other club or group, uh, uh, National Honor Society, wins some type of national or international award, there's not a little something extra stuck in your paycheck. Absolutely not, okay. and I would hope not. Okay, and okay. Conversely, if the district does not perform well in because we have schools within the district that are not meeting whatever standards somebody's made up last week uh, or whatever, and we know about that. If, if that continues or does that gets worse, is there something in here that says we're taking 15% away from you until you get this straightened out? That would not be in my contract, but I'd hope, I'd, be, I'd hope and anticipate that if my performance wasn't satisfactory to the school board, then that would be taken care of through the uh, evaluation process. How long do you get about? How often do you get evaluated? Every year. Okay. And how long is this contract good for? Because I didn't. This one was five years. Okay, and this was just signed in 2010. 2010, so okay. through 2015. Okay. So is is there a deal in here that compensates you when you go out uh, when uh, you want to take somebody to lunch? And, and you, is there a slush fund thing in here where you get X number of dollars a month to, uh, for, inter, quote, entertainment purposes? Um, I'd love, you actually have the document on the back of that because I ran that. It, in there, there's a, an expense account. And the purpose for that in the office, the joke is it's called the funeral fund because I use that to pay for the funeral uh, flowers from a staff member loses a loved one and they're sent on behalf of the school board and the school district as well as last year, for instance, we had um, a large number of retirees, and each year I used that money to pay for the retiree gifts and part of the food for that banquet so we can thank our employees. And um, the money is used, for instance, when we had the Finance Action Network, which you and I have discussed before, that mm -hmm. when they come in and give up their time and we meet over the lunch hour, so I buy their lunch. Okay. 
So oftentimes uh, we, we joke that whether or not that expense account, if you will, belongs in that contract, but it does allow me to provide on behalf of the district, for instance, those funeral flowers or the gifts when retirements occur. Okay. And so that's the you are the witness of that sheet, Rick. There it is. Wow. Okay. So, um, and then uh, the Rolls Royce that you drive, is that provided by the uh, school district at no expense to you, or, or how does that work? Here's what happens. I have that, that in that contract, it lists that that vehicle is for work-related purposes, and that's how it was stated in the first contract. In this, this contract, I said, can you add one thing for me? Because I feel guilty when I stop at the grocery store on the way home, yeah. because that's a personal use. So they added a sentence that would say what common sense if I'm you know in that vehicle and I need to make a personal stop at the grocery store it doesn't say grocery store mm -hmm. that I may do that and then certainly the value of that vehicle for which any part of it I use to and from work mm -hmm. as well as stopping at high V on the way home then is a uh, the income the deductions are made yeah it's a 10 whatever they yeah. call those forms absolutely okay. so the trip that you take to Key West Florida every year you don't <laughs> use the school vehicle no, the old school vehicle stays behind. Probably. Although I really haven't had the opportunity to take that trip yet, so I'm looking forward <laughs> to a vacation. vacation somewhere. <laughs> okay. Um, just cutting through the, the stuff here, I, and we've had a little fun with this, but this is pretty serious stuff to a lot of people. Um, the There's nothing in this contract that treats you significantly differently than other contract employees with the district. You know, I would think, um, I can't think of categories that would treat me differently. In that contract, Rick, I pay the same share of medical and dental and the other life insurance kinds of benefits, you know, that the other um, administrators or groups pay, mm -hmm. you know, if it's available to them. Um, that's very much the same. I'm, I'm trying to think of other categories that would that would stand out differently again you know the deferred compensation was put in because that was the equivalent to the early retirement incentive that was a program for teachers and other administrators have mm -hmm. so um i you know again other than i have the expense account that allows me to pay for those things actually on behalf of the district for employees the we went through a deal here recently and we may, you, we may be forced to do it again where there was a reduction in salary because of state mm -hmm. aid is there a provision in this contract for you as a superintendent to have a reduction in salary because of lack of either state or federal funds um I, yes I, i'm glad you brought that up because if you look on that first page that you're touching it says my salary is one hundred eighty one thousand dollars and that it would increase each year by the same rate that the teacher salaries increase and my salary is not one hundred eighty-one thousand dollars this year. It's one hundred seventy-five thousand, and that is because of um, the same rate that whatever the teachers does happens to me. However, I need to share something with you because I'm sure my my friends at the local newspaper, if they're listening, are quickly doing the math and saying, "But that doesn't come out right to what their reduction was." My reduction is greater than the teachers because as superintendent, I'm not going to take any less of a hit than the worst treated group. And the administrator stepped forward and said they would take a three percent deduction so I took a three percent reduction okay um, your vacation schedule I'm assuming and I, I, I see a section here vacation and benefits um, it um, it's not the whole summer no it's <laughs> it's identical to our other 12 month employees it's up to the 20 days a year that can accumulate okay up to a certain number well this is pretty bland I would agree yes you know, and I, that's why I'm thinking hopefully a certain group can just dust off the old story and run her again. Can you, during the middle of this contract, in, you've got a contract, but this is an at-will state. Three of the five school board members say, Pam, it's been fun, we're done, goodbye. How does that work? They, if you've got a yeah, five-year deal there's no buyout in that contract. So we, I, that was important to me when I took this job saying it has to be right for the school board and it has to be right for me. So it's, it's you know, mutual agreement. If there's not three votes to keep me... Then you're done and that's it? And that's absolutely right. Okay. So where's the section on golden parachute? 
I'm, for... I'm still looking for the section that says I have a house. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks for coming in. And, and I, actually, I'm past. I, I, we should be doing ABC News now. That's all right. Yeah, we're just going to blow past the ABC. Uh, I sincerely appreciate you asking the question, Rick. When you when Ruth called into the office today and said back to school and contract, I said, Deanne, I want to talk to Rick because I thought no one's asked me the question, so I thank you. So if another member of the media were to ask you, can I hold on to this contract and can I look at it? You know, I would say that personally that is my choice, and I would say I'd hope I would have to deem them reputable. Wow, we got deemed reputable. <laughs> up here. Did. But you can't leave this with because I'm not. No. I wouldn't make copies of this anyway. And and to be fair to to everybody that's listening to this, this is about ten pages long. And and I've done a lot of been involved in a lot of employment contracts. And no, I haven't read this over. But it seems pretty pretty much cut and dried. It, and even the expense thing, where and there's stuff on here. Um, Retirement banquet stuff, honor e meals. You bought a postcard or something. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Not very much. But there are five entries on here for what are called sympathy flowers or sympathy contributions. And I remember doing that, uh, where you spend a little bit of money on behalf of the school board in the school district. Yeah. Ruth, there it is. You want to take a there close look? There it is. Look? I see it. I will vouch for it. Yeah. It is right there in your house. You have seen it, right? Okay. It is now going back into her hands, which means it will go into the hermetically sealed envelope <laughs> and be returned to the vault underneath the Instructional Planning Center. <laughs> okay. Try to stay out of trouble, would you? You know, I, I try hard every day. Okay. Thank so, do you, Sue, with, just with you for just a moment. Sure. Um, the legislature and the governor have talked about we need to change this so this is uh, back to apparently what it was before um, or something like that. Is the school fall, Sioux Falls School District going to object to that? We are not. We are going to follow the law just like we're doing right now. Okay. Well, that takes all the fun out of it. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much Thank for stopping you. by. Nice to see you.